Okay, in this video we're going to hook up a wireless Xbox controller to the Raspberry Pi and this will let RetroArch and uh, RetroPie see the controller and use the configuration for it with um, all the games that you want to play. Obviously being wireless it's a lot more flexible than um, the wired controllers and distance isn't a problem and uh, it can be a lot easier to use for certain games. So you're probably familiar with the Xbox 360 controller. I haven't got one myself, I'm borrowing this one. Thanks very much Luke and hopefully should be able to uh, get it set up without too many problems. Now I'm using, as you can see on the screen, a 2.4.2 image of RetroPie, so it's quite new, uh, released a week or two ago, and all I've done is write the image to the card, and you can see on the other videos how you go about writing an image to the card, and that's all I've done to this. I haven't configured it in any other way, so it's, it's pretty clean and, and ready to go. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the Raspberry Pi can see the wireless receiver that you've got to put in it. Now you've got to put a, a wireless receiver in the Raspberry Pi for this to work. It hasn't got anything built in and Bluetooth won't work either. So it needs to be a wireless receiver. I think it's 2.4 gigahertz standard, but it might be slightly customised for um, Microsoft or the Xbox. So I don't think... Um, a generic 2.4 gigahertz wireless receiver would work. You have to get a specific one for an Xbox controller. The official Microsoft one is something like £20, I think. The one I'm using, a bit of a Chinese knockoff, it's about £4 on eBay, uh, but it looks the same. It's like a sort of white pebble shaped, um, and then it's just from that hooked to, via USB to the Raspberry Pi. I'll put a link in the comments description about um, which type it is but basically it's just uh, one that says Xbox 360 on the front and on the back it says just have a look it says Xbox 360 PC wireless gaming receiver but like I say it's not an official one so um, any of the third party versions should work pretty well with it all I've got connected to the Pi at the minute and it's a B model is the wireless receiver in USB and a keyboard and obviously in my hand I've got the wireless controller that will hopefully get detected. So the first thing I'll do on this screen is once you've um, connected remotely in, or you could do this directly on your TV however you want to connect, all I've done is log in as Pi, password Raspberry, and this is the default uh, introduction, and I'm just going to type LSUSB, which tells me what's connected to the Pi at the moment. So the first three are part of the standard USB hub, um, don't need those those sort of details. Uh, you can ignore those top three, but the fourth one there, Sigma Micro, is my keyboard that I've plugged in, and the last one is the wireless receiver. Now, like I said, it's not an official Microsoft one, but obviously they've written this data in there, so um, the systems and anything detecting it sort of is quite happy with the the description. So I know it's worth moving forward now because I can still can see this at least. If you don't have a detection of the wireless receiver. Um, you probably want to go back a step and double check you plugged it in correctly, it's the right type, I don't know, it's powered on, etc, etc. But um, this this should be fine. And the wireless receiver as well is powered by the Raspberry. I haven't had to externally power it, and I think that's fine. It shouldn't be a problem. I did a test a bit earlier, and it did connect fine, but I did have a couple of dropouts, but I'm not sure if that's because of the... Um, because of the way I've got this set up, maybe I was too far from it, maybe there's a bit of interference, but I think the general process should work fine. And obviously if you've got an official Microsoft receiver, it might be an uh, even better sort of connection. But anyway, that's um, what you need to do there. Then what the Raspberry Pi or the RetroPi setup doesn't have by default is the Xbox driver. I've read somewhere that it might be possible to get it working with default drivers that are already installed, but it's best just to install the correct specific Xbox driver. So to do that, if you type CD RetroPi, and you need to be in the home directory to do that, which is, as you can see here, um, forward slash home, forward slash pi. So I'm going to change directory into RetroPi hyphen setup. And in this directory, we're going to run uh, with the command sudo full stop forward slash to run the script. Uh, then it's RetroPi underscore setup dot sh and hit enter there and this will probably complain about the size of the card because I haven't resized it yet I haven't done anything to it at all whatsoever so um, usually you'd want to resize your card but for this purpose it doesn't matter that it hasn't got much space left so I'll just continue uh, if you want to see how to resize the card look at the 
emulation 101 video I've got that covers all the basics. Okay, so now we're in here, and normally I would definitely update the RetroPie setup script, and I might as well now as well actually. It, whilst you do all this, you do need to make sure your Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, whether it's a wireless dongle you've got in there or um, an Ethernet cable, as long as it can see um, the internet to download and more files. So I'm just going to update the RetroPie setup script, make sure I've got the latest version there. It only takes a few seconds and it'll ask us to restart. Okay, here we go. So it says, fetch the latest version, you need to restart. So to do that, go to cancel and then you're back out. Press the up arrow, you get the command back up again. Press enter and it will fire back up. Although it'll ask me that question again about size. There we go. Right, now we're in the setup script. The only thing we really need to do is in section number three, setup, in here, and if you scroll down the bottom, there we go, 329 in this version of the script, install Xbox controller. Hit OK there. Uh, OK, so it checked to see if uh, Xbox DRV driver was there. It can see it's not, so it's going to download it. Now this, I think, takes something in the region of about 5 or 10 minutes, uh, maybe not that long, but it's probably worth uh, me fast-forwarding this. Basically, all that's going to happen is it runs down downloading drivers, configuring them, installing them, and getting them ready in place there. So uh, if it asks any questions, just say yes to progress, but I think it's pretty much... Um, uh, it will run down and say this might take about another meg of space to use, are you okay with that? You press yes, enter, and then after a few minutes you get to the end of the script. So if I just fast forward there. Okay, so that took about two or three minutes, not too long. Uh, ran through, completed, uh, didn't ask me any prompts, just sort of carried on and now it says installed Xbox driver and adapted ETCRC local so it will start a process on startup there. I didn't notice that before, that's quite interesting because um, I think the process we're going to do starts this in a slightly different way. Uh, it will be started on boot so um, part of what we're going to do will show how to get this to make sure it runs every time because obviously you don't want to be typing a command line to get this working every time. So that's all we need to do there. If we hit OK and then we can quit out of this, cancel and cancel again. Now if we go to page on, uh, here we go, github.com petrotblock forward slash retrobuy setup. There's a uh, forward slash wiki forward slash setting up the Xbox 360 controller. I'll put that in the description. There's a page here on setting up the Xbox controller. Now, as you s okay, so the first thing it did, and that's what this is what we just ran. We ran the app get install Xbox driver, but through that interface, so it effectively downloaded that, installed this, and then to run it, you've got three options. Um, you've either got uh, to run it in the ETCRC local so it will run if you have four controllers it'll kick it off four times uh, with this sort of process to make sure it detects each one but that's a bit more memory and CPU intensive to have four processes running as opposed to a different option it's got down here the second option I think this really just uh, manually kicks it off in a command line um, not sure the benefit of that because you need to make sure you do that every time and the third one which it's recommended and plenty of people sort of run with this is to run it as a with D and D option. So it's it's running as a sort of service. So it can support multiple controllers without having to um, <clears throat> run the same service multiple times. So it's a bit more efficient basically. And they're saying really the third option is what you want to go for. So that's what we're doing. Now looking at it, it looks really complicated, but it's extremely easy. So that's the one that we'll run through and do. And down the bottom here, this is why I was getting a bit distracted before, it says sudo update rcd xbox drive start. So basically in the um, rcd it will kick this off when you reboot. But I think the script did that anyway, but I guess it probably wouldn't hurt to do this bit um, anyway. So, point is now, uh, you're, we need to restart the Raspberry Pi, so we can do that with sudo reboot. And if you've got a default setup, it will go straight back into emulation station. So I suggest 
quitting out of that when it does start up. So I'm going to do that now, sudo reboot, and you'll see on the tally that you've got hooked up that the um, writing will come back sort of saying it's processing the, the startup and uh, there we go, I'll lose the connection there because it's just restarting. Uh, I'll fire that back up in a minute and what I'm going to do as well is to make sure, actually it did. I did see quickly there on the screen as it um, scrolled through that the Xbox driver got in successfully installed. Um, by default the wireless receiver can see four Xbox controllers so it can support up to four and uh, they get detected as separate devices but I'm just I've just got the one and I'm going to show you how to connect to one but um, you can easily change this for multiple controllers and I'll show you how you do that in a minute but because I don't have an Xbox and I've done this very often when it boots up I'm just going to check and make sure that um, what we've done already doesn't do everything that we'd need um, to detect it. I'm pretty sure we need to do extra steps but it's worth me just double checking. So it's booting back in now. I'm just going to get the uh, wireless receiver. It's, it comes with a pretty long cable so it's, you can get it pretty close to the controller if you need to. So I've got that into emulation station and when emulation, sta emulation station boots it says four gamepads are detected which are the four that the wireless receiver could um, support. So it's one way of telling that the wireless receiver is behaving itself. I'm going to quit out of emulation station with F4 so I just press that and I've just gone back to the, the prompt kind of like you've got on the screen there. Now to pair, like I say I haven't done, I haven't had these controllers before but to pair you just hold down the main uh, not guide button I think they call it and if you hold that for a couple of seconds the light comes on and just flashes normally then on the receiver I'm just going to tap the receiver button and the green light on the receiver starts flashing and now on the controller I'm going to hold down the pair button which is uh, between the left and the right trigger on the back it's just a small round button next to the word Microsoft on the controller and I know it's trying to pair because now the LED on the controller is spinning around in a circle. Um, but I'm not expecting it to at this stage. For those of you who haven't had these Xbox controllers, to know that it has paired successfully, you can tell because the LED, um, it's got four quadrants around the circle of the LED. And one of those quadrants just stays on. Um, and it tells you which player. So for example, I'm player one. So the, the top left quadrant of the circle just stay on solid and the other lights would go out but I haven't, it hasn't done anything like that it's just all four are still flashing at me so it's not pairing so I'm just going to carry on with the instructions and I think that should work so if we go back to this web page the first thing we had to do was install the Xbox driver that's what we did earlier with the um, sort of graphical-ish um, steps then we've got to do one of these three methods so we're not going to do the first one uh, we're not going to do the second one, we're going to go for this third one. The third possibility, it says you can use an initd script, which is a script that kicks in on boot up, so it's useful because it starts every time you start your Pi. Save the following content to etc init the Xbox driver. So basically it's saying create this file and put this text in that file. And this is how you go about that. It's just fire back into the Pi. So you can, I connect with Putty and I've got a separate video about how to do that, but that's all pretty standard. So log in to the Pi that's rebooted. And you can see, if I put that there, that this is the path that we want to do. So the easiest way is probably copy that. If I highlight that, um, ignore the colon at the end, you don't need that. Right mouse copy. We can get rid of that window, can't we? Right. Now, now we're in here, we're going to create a text file. So you do that um, as administrator. sudo nano is the text editor. And then if you right mouse on the, um, hit the right mouse, you get the text we just pasted. So it's going to edit a text file that's in this directory. Now that doesn't exist at the moment. So um, what the system does is just create it. So I'll press enter. And you've got an empty file because it's not there until we save it. That's all it's doing. And the content, I'm not going to run through all this. I don't even understand half of it. So just uh, click there to select it. Scroll to the bottom of it. Hold down shift. 
click at the end and right mouse copy. Go into the file we're creating here, etc and at D, Xbox DRV, right mouse there and it pastes it all in for you. Then hit Control X and it says do you want to save, so you press yes. And um, it says file name to write, Xbox to write, that's fine, press enter. And that's it, you've created the file and you've put the contents in there. Then it's got this command here, sudo chmod plus x. Again, select that, copy, back here, right mouse. That's going to, as administrator, change the permissions to add executable onto this file. So it'll allow it to be executed rather than only read. So it's just changing the permission on the file we just created, basically. And that's done. And then lastly, uh, don't know if it's 100% needed, we're going to do it anyway, is sudo, there we go, I just copied and pasted it again, sudo update rcd, so this updates the script that kicks in at the start of the Raspberry Pi boot up sequence to say it should start the Xbox driver, because obviously we need that to begin to run properly. Um, so I'll do that now, now I may get an error, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a couple of errors, but I'm fairly sure they're not that serious, so I'm going to ignore them. Okay, now uh, if we go down to the instructions here, you'll also need a configuration file. Save the following to this directory. So I need to, or this file as well. So I'm going to create this one. Copy that again, I'm not doing the colon at the end. And we do sudo nano paste that because it's got the full path so we don't have to change directory into anything and press that. If there was a file here you'd see the contents here already so you can be fairly sure there's nothing there or if there is there's nothing in it anyway and here is the script again select that, select the bottom, hold down shift, select it all, right mouse copy and paste by pressing the right mouse and it's the only thing you have to change in here are how many controllers you want it to support and then it would do the relevant section. I've only got one, so I'm going to change that to one. Obviously, if you've got three controllers, put a three in there. And quit out of that with Control X. It says, do you want to save it? Say yes. What's the file name? That's it. Press Enter. And that's that done. OK. <coughs> Here it just says, yeah, change that number. And it also recommends using that method that we've just done. Now it says at this point you can test your pads with JS test. I don't know if we need to restart the pipe at this point, but let's just follow these instructions. So the JS test will test the joypad. Obviously it would need to be paired and mine is still flashing. But first we'll just check that it can see it. And you can see this by here you've got JS test is looking in this directory, which is dev devices input. So if I change directory there to dev and change directory into input and list that there you can see that is currently detected one two three four um, joypad so that's promising um, and we can see if it detects the control at the wireless controller I've got at the moment now I will try what they've got there which is JS test JS0 because that's what mine would be on now, I don't think it's going to see anything because I don't think it's paired right at the minute um, okay, so let's press enter there. And on this screen, when I press buttons or move the controller, it should well show and change and move. Ah, and it is. That's interesting because it doesn't look paired to me, but um, it can clearly see something going on. Yep, going up, down on the D pad, pressing the buttons, it can see that. Um, select button or back button on this, start. Yeah, all seems um, detected. So, and this is definitely a wireless one, I can assure you, there's no cables going on. Um, so it can see that, even though it's not in its paired state. I'm just going to try to pair it once more, tapping the button on the wireless receiver and pressing the sync or the pair button on the controller. It's spinning around, I'll just see whether it sort of picks up and fixes on one. But um, if not, we're carrying on anyway because it can obviously see it. It's just spinning away, I'll watch that. Okay, so now you've finished testing the joypad and you can see that in this example it's quite happy and, and good to see it all. I'm going to quit out of that with Control c And looking back at the instructions, 
So it says after reboot, when your controllers are detected, you'll have to configure RetroPy to use them. Okay, I think it's a bit sketchy here on whether you should reboot at this point, but I think it's um, a good idea to, and I might also see if my controller pairs fully. So I think at this step, we'll do a reboot. And soon, you can ignore the rest of this guide because it's really just about hooking up the controller in the RetroArch configs, and that's a separate video anyway. It's purely setting up a controller in the normal way. There's nothing different or special about that. So the last thing I'm going to do here is reboot it once more. There we go. And it just makes sure that um, the Xbox driver starts on boot up. And then we'll go into, there we go, it's just disconnected Raspberry Pi there. Uh, then we will go into um, the RetroArch configuration and just make sure that all the buttons are there. Now with 2.4.2, I'm pretty sure there's already a configuration file that knows the right buttons for an Xbox controller. So you could leave it there, but it's worth going just this extra step so you can see how RetroArch will detect it. And RetroArch is the emulator for things like Mega Drive, SNES, NES, uh, Master System, and quite a few others. It just is not for uh, MAME and some other ones. And for MAME, you just configure this in the same way with um, pressing tab and you get the GUI and then the system should see the wireless controller and you just press the buttons there. Okay, just booting back into the Pi. And right, so about five seconds into the boot, my controller has got a solid light on the circle. Um, it's the top left one. The other three are just out. It's just solid on that first one. And now emulation station started. It says one gamepad detected. Which is exactly right. It says hold a button to configure it. Now if I hold a button on the controller, it um, just kicks in as normal. And it says, right, press up, down, left, right. A button, B button, start, select, and left trigger, right trigger. And that's it. So I've just configured emulation station. Uh, it didn't capture it on this video, but it's ex done exactly the same way as you would uh, on the other video. So just grab one of those. Okay, so we're just going to go into the Pi for the last time. And that was pretty straightforward, actually. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so log in as Pi Raspberry. And I'll just show you how RetroPi can, and RetroArch are really happy with that controller now. So we're just going to configure it as normal. Basically now it's like having a, a USB controller plugged in as normal. So it's not really any different. What we're going to do is change into the RetroPi setup directory. Oh, that one. And we're going to run the setup script that we were in earlier. RetroPi underscore setup. And it'll complain about the size like that. Now it's Fairly important, I think, at this point to make sure you're quit out of Emulation Station because otherwise that can have a hold on the controller. So I'm going to quit out of the keyboard F4 on that. And that's just made sure I'm not running Emulation Station. Oh, I've just had a thought. Okay, um, here you can see if you're running it or not because if you do PS, hyphen U, Pi, you can see the processes that the user Pi is running and Emulation Station isn't one of them. So before you configure a controller, I just quit out of it to play safe. Okay, so we'll run the script. And say, yes, you won't get this if you resize your card. And we want to go for setup. And then I'm going to configure, the register a RetroArch controller. Press enter, and I can see on my controller I've still got um, just that one single light on, which is the top left quarter, it's solid on. The receiver is just solid on green. I think it only ever flashes when it's trying to pair, and that's when you press the button. So the receiver should be solid on, and your controller ideally should be solid on. Um, and if you've got multiple controllers, the different quadrant, I guess, would be um, highlighted. OK, I'm going to press OK there. And it says connect only the controller. That's the only thing I've got plugged in is the wireless receiver and the keyboard, and that's fine. OK. And it's detected here, Xbox Gamepad. Now, if you, it hasn't detected the gamepad properly, it usually says here, Xbox Wireless Receiver, because it just sees that plugged in, not the gamepad. So you can tell at this point as well if there's something gone a bit wrong. So that's, that's correct. 
Okay, um, it just warns you to make sure that um, the controller is, is, isn't in a stale state, so there's not a button that's part depressed or set, um, sort of already going to send a signal. So you want to make sure they're all centered basically, but that's usually fine. And press enter, and then you get ready because you get about four seconds ago to press the right button. Press enter, right B, there we go, it's detected that. Y, select, which is the back button, start, up. Down, left, right, A button, X, left button shoulder, right button shoulder, left two trigger, right two trigger, right F3 is press down on that one, press down on the right thumb, uh, press right on the left analog, left, down, up, and the right analog, go right, left, down, up, and that's it. So that's all the buttons that retroarch, and that's pretty much all the buttons that are on the controller would do. And it confirms here the full file name that it's written as Xbox Gamepad user space .cfg. And what we we'll do is really quickly just go and have a look at that file to see what was written. Uh, okay, cancel out of that, cancel out of that, and you can see where they're written. If you go to this folder, uh, emulators. So cd forward slash opt forward slash retropy forward slash emulators forward slash retroarch forward slash configs, and if you type ls space hyphen LAH, it will list the files in that room. I'll make this window a bit bigger, let's try that again. It will list the files in there and uh, tell you the date, the size, etc. And what's useful is if we scan down here, this 2.4.2 um, is built on the 15th, I guess, or pretty close to it. So all the dates are the same, uh, except for this one, which is written today. And um, that just helps you see, oh, right, that's the file that you've done. And you can see here there's already another file that would probably do the trick, so you don't need to configure your own necessarily. After you've paired the wireless controller, it'll probably just work. So uh, what we're going to do is just quickly put uh, exit key on, because that's a really popular option. And I know, because um, I've looked in these before, that if I read this other file, it's already got the combo in there. So it's just a quick way of copying that out. So I'm going to edit a USB this file here, and I can see this is the text I want. So I'm just going to copy out the code that sets a hotkey button and exits the emulator. Escape there, uh, Control C there. Sorry, Control X. I think. Um, now I'm going to edit this file that we just created with sudo nano xbox. Xbox Gamepad. There we go. Um, press hyphen to finish it and it'll correctly escape the spaces and brackets and things like that. Okay, and, to, and you know you've got the right one because it's got a load of content in. So I'm just going to scroll to the bottom. I'm going to paste those lines that I copied a minute ago. And I'm going to set my enable hotkey to the start button. And looking up here, the start button is 13. So I'll change that to 13. And then um, no, I want my select button actually, select, it's 12. And then if I hold down select, then uh, that enables hotkeys and I'm going to set an exit emulator hotkey to make me go back from the game to emulation station with the start button, which is button 30. So here, put 30. So hold down select, press start, and it boot out of the game. And that's really useful, so you don't need a keyboard attached. Okay, um, if you do set hotkeys, do look at the hotkey video that explains how to set them all properly because by default I think they will always work so this this would probably still work fine. I'm just thinking how it works. This would probably still work fine but if you have any problems check out the hotkey video. Right, control X, save that, yes, press enter and that's done. I can see that the um, control has stayed solid light on all the time. I must have done it a bit oddly before when it sort of dropped it for a second but do put in the comments if you find that the wireless connection stays um, connected quite happily or if you get multiple um, joypads working quite happily. I've only got the one but the principle would be the same we just put a two or three or four in that file that we edited earlier and that should be it. If there are any questions please put them in the uh, comments. If it was useful to you the video please click the thumbs up button and uh, if you want to know any more tips about the RetroPie, getting the controllers or games or any other configuration, um, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much.